Right, it's not very often I can come in before it gets skimmed and I've got a couple of hours to spare where we can sort this mess out. So if the plaster wouldn't skim this, the box isn't level, it's not cut out properly, I full well know if I get a pad or a multi-tool, it's gonna chip the new skim and that's my problem then. So I'm gonna run through how we're gonna cut out, fix this sort of stuff so when it gets skimmed, it should be perfect, stuff like this. So we've got the laser level set down there. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six sockets low level, one socket high level, two light switches, and these ones haven't even been cut out, as you can see. So it's nice that we can get in first, and I've got my template. So we'll set the laser up, we'll put it on, we're gonna cut out with the multi-tool, and we'll go from there. Right, that should be set up to the top of the box, which you can see. So the best way to do it is take a corner out, we find two edges, we can then work off that, draw on this template, which looks excessively big for that, actually. Oh God, that looks way too big. Bear with me. So it is right. I think just sitting at that, it looks miles different, but to satisfy, because that does go in there very flush, but just to satisfy my uh, weirdness. If I hold that up, the edge, of the box is there. So if I put this on here, we level the top up, so it just skims it there. I'm gonna draw around this. Get the multi-tool out, hit it flush, because I wanna be hitting with the multi-tool on the box itself. This one should be fine, there should be no having to mess around, but the other ones, when we start cutting out the excess, is I've got some ply, we're gonna cut that down, we're gonna screw it on the inside, and then the bits that we're gonna be cutting out, if it's too high, we can piece back in the bottom. I can I put some CT1 on it. I can might fix it in place. So when they skim it, it ain't gonna move and I'm not gonna to have to pad saw and mess around with it afterwards. As you can see, it's 10 times better than it was. We've got a little bit here, but normally the socket front overhangs by that much. So that should be sound, happy with that. That's maybe next time I just come up and I go above the line, because this bit here, is on it, this bit here it's just a bit under, but like we say, it's better than it was. But let's jump down now to the next one, this should be interesting. So this one is completely covered up, we've still got a laser for our height, and it should be perfect because we lasered all these originally. But we want to find out where the box finishes and it starts. So as I'd say with the multi-tool, turn it on, obviously you've got no teeth on the side, but it'll let you drag along until you can hit it. Do that both ways, you should be able to find it. Right, so that's the edge of our boxes, where this pencil mark is, there and there. Obviously we've got our height there, so let's trust this now. And with this one, I'm just going to go within the lines, just that, see that one's kicking over way more than that should. Double check I've hit that all the way across. All right, as you can see, so this template really, you hold that where it should have been, which is on the box there. It's a lot bigger than that. So I'm happy reference wise that we can use that, but that's now a perfectly cut out box. Now to that, and I know one's a single and one is a double. One's a socket and one is a fuse spur for the outside socket. But I can't quite remember, but I think I've got a picture. That was good. I forgot to turn the GoPro on while I was recording, but there we go. I wanted to get a few, I took the screws out of it because it just wasn't a great fixing. Jobs are good and right. Now let's run over to the fun ones. So this is the ones I'm on about. We're okay here, here and here, but it's been cut way too much here. So we've got some plasterboard. We can cut this down to size. I have got some nine mil ply board, which we're gonna take a slither off. That will allow us, very similar to when you do down lights, we'll cut a longer piece off, I'll pinch it in place, we'll screw it, screw it. We can then cut this to size. And that means when it gets plastered, it should be sweet. Right, we're gonna do a little pilot bit in there. That's a square edge. And then up here, I'm trying to do this with one hand. We're gonna be putting in a screw there and a screw there. 
We'll put our piece in. Obviously this only works if there's loads of dab that's out of the way. That's then gonna be sat flush with our socket front there and get these two screws in. I can't do this on camera because I need two hands. We take this one out and then we measure up a bit of plasterboard and I'm probably not gonna screw it in place. I'm probably just gonna get some little, um, some CT1 or something just to glue it in place for now. Because if I try and put a screw through that tiny sliver of plasterboard, it's just gonna split. That's in place now. We've cut our bit down. We can then glue that in flush and that will give us, it might look, the camera makes it look a bit off, but if you get eye level with that, it's actually in line. Same with that. So that'd be great. I'm just gonna grab some uh, CT ones from somewhere. This is the wrong one. This is the one they get sent me the other day. This is the new filler and cork. I've just opened it. Oh, back to the van. There we have it. We ended up using a bit of BT1 and I never sealed the end up, so uh, that's blocked. But that's in. And that realistically is what we've got and what we're doing. So that's our next, uh, that's the biggest one. So let's do that one next. I've just turned it on and realized I've got uh, BT1 all over my GoPro now. That one's better. That one's better. There, I think that's all I'm done in here now, which is sound. But Adam wants to get the power up, so this actually feeds two sockets further up in the dormer bedroom on the back side, which was an afterthought. So when I was on holiday, Adam came and added some extra ones. So they run off this circuit. So now I'm gonna let these dry for a little bit. I'm gonna pull them all out, weigh them, test them, and then everything's all right. We're gonna power them up so the bedroom sockets are working. It is hammering it down. I had to go because there's no access yet through anyway. You've got to go out and around so to bring all this through. That size I've done and it's all where you go through. But this is where things are going to start getting interesting. And what I'm going to have to do, as you can see, that's my hoosiv. So I'm going to try and attempt to do something a bit different on this one. We've got some plasterboard. We've obviously got the ply. I'm going to make this. I'm going to cut this bigger so we can get a piece of plasterboard cut to this size, same thing, we'll do some um, plywood up and down or side to side, whatever I want, but then size that up exactly where we need it to and then cut a new piece of plasterboard out that will then screw in because this is just never ever gonna work, ever. Like, that's two fingers. That's, I'm not gonna say it. Um, yeah. I was gonna do it and I just found out Adam's took my spirit level and the multi tool. Back outside then, already then. Welcome back, welcome back. First of all, let's make a little square. We're gonna push the multi-tool blade into the concrete so it rounds the edges off nicely. We're gonna put that up and you'll see from me pointing at the wall, that's where the studs are. So we made it wide enough to hit the center of each stud. We're gonna draw around that with our brand new pencil, with Holfner's one I think it was, bought from Elex. Multi-tool, which is nice and blunt now. Let's get that up and around and cut the outline out. This will allow me to trim it down, inset the new bit, which we've just cut, yeah, I'll look at that for some reason. Put that in, sweet. We're then gonna put the other one on the floor, use the old one as the existing template. As I'm seeing here, we can see sort of what measurements we need to tweak, which bits are gonna work, which bits aren't. After we've yeah, lined that up, we've drawn around it. I'm doing, the, the, the drawings ever so slightly different, putting it in there, making sure that it is level, nothing worse, gonna cut it out and it's gonna be wonky, looks like Adam's done it. Now dull our brand new motor tool blade a bit more by pushing down into the concrete. I up, push it in, pretend it's really good, and you guys won't have known that I actually had to do another piece because I snapped it in half. That's it screwed in, that's it. Chuck it at the wall. <coughs> nice. Right, I think I've completed all of them. What a boring job to do, but hopefully, like we say, spend the time doing it now. That's 10 times better. And what I did with a few of these, instead of cutting them out, I cut a bit more out and I've put a P PGB that in so that's now solid same thing with that one it was just tiny bits cut that one out there but uh it, it's a it should be a great time saver for the future and what else is a great time saver as well if you guys haven't heard of it it's tradeify which is my job management software ha that was the wicked segue um it helps me do my invoices my scheduling my quotations transferring it all across i use easy cert there is other sort of civitate there is other certification software. I know Tradeify do some as well, but I'm finishing out my subscription with EasyCert. Once you've done it, if you go to the top right side on my iPad, you click share, and then you can find Tradeify on that, and you can share it straight to a job or a quote or an invoice, pretty much wherever you want. 
And when you send that across, you attach the file. It's all done in one simple step and easy peasy go. It's 50% off for the first three months at the moment. Um, Adam's on it. I've now been receiving invoices from him, which is bizarre. But then once I've paid him, I just click paid. It notifies him straight away on his Tradeify app and it's all bada bing, bada boom. So hit the link down below if you fancy saving some time and some paper and some trees. What a dusty, messy day. And hopefully that has become useful for someone who has to deal with those plasterers that aren't very good at their job or someone that's... Anyway, I hope that's been useful for someone that has to deal with um, bad plastering, bad dabbing. Yeah. I've got only got one hand, that was a dab. Um, there's several other ways you can do it. And if I come across it again, I do it in different ways. But put the prep work in and it will get a finished job. Realistically, it wasn't our job to do, as you know, as electricians. And a lot of people would have gone, sod it, it's not my job. The sockets then would have gone on. They would have looked awful. And then we would have moaned to the homeowner. Well, it's not actually my problem. It's nothing to do with me. You now need to get a decorator in to come and try and fill cork and do all that sort of stuff, which it's i get it i've probably been there before and be like well it's literally not my job why am i doing it but because we know the guy and we had a spare few hours today and i wanted to get it right because one of the one of them jobs that you're just going to see we're going to work on it for the next six months and when we get to the end it's just going to look mint so if you haven't already like the video subscribe if you haven't thank you very much and i'll see you on the next one take care now bye bye then